Sinead Quinlan. I know, I don't Hello. know, what we, we, like we were actually just talking beforehand. I don't know why I do that from time to time, like as if, as if we just literally turned on Zoom. Yeah, and the, uh, the <laughs> we go from the get-go. Yeah. How did you get a fada on your, uh, on your E? I'm just looking at out of nosiness. Like, how did you manage to, did you copy and paste it out of someplace? You do, is it, you click option on oh. the keyboards. Oh. Do it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I googled but, it once because I'd be very particular with my father. Do you know what I mean? If it was I, left out, I'd actually be a bit odd. I I purposely I was actually pointed out to me the other day. I was replying to a woman called Roisin, and wh- whatever way she, I knew of her, in her email there wasn't a Roisin, there wasn't a father on the O. But somewhere else I saw she, she'd sent me something a script or something before, and there was a father on, and I went fuck, and I googled and I had to copy and paste the father. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it wasn't a father. It was probably some Arabic, you know, yeah. flick. <laughs> But she actually commented, she went, she goes, oh, sound for that, sound. I know. I, like, it, like, it does change the name, I think. It's, like, otherwise, it's like Shiniad. You know what I mean? Like, who's that? Something. Yeah, I'm just yeah, looking yeah. at it. Yeah, it'd be Shiniad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, you're 100%, 100% right. You're, and, like, I mean, and being a Cork person, you're not pushovers for your names either. Like, when it's Cork, people are quite staunch. I lived there for eight years. Like, I mean, that's where I got my level of ignorance from it was just i was easy oh yeah here we e- go now we're not even on two minutes <laughs> now i know that was if ever there was a backhanded kind of just that's a compliment but not really a, no it not is really. a it absolutely is a compliment to me i i use the word ignorance for all all sorts of ig, i'm ignorant of the correct use of the word ignorant that's what i am <laughs> yeah, me too we completely yeah. o- overuse I think in it. english uh in english name is jane i'm like i don't think i like that i don't look like a jane i feel what no yeah. is it jane yeah crazy i would have, that's a big jump like isn't it i know like, it's probably the old plain jane thing do you know what i mean did bad things for the janes like i like it because sinead is like the yeah actually now did you yeah like you it's like uh it? it's like the name karen is ruined forever as well do you know what i mean it's like oh, oh. Such a karen yeah <laughs> What's the male? What's the male Karen? Because there's obviously plenty of male Karens. You know the dose like that'll be just. Oh, I actually don't know. Would it be Kevin? I think it. I think it's Tom, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking easily could be. It easily. My my name. I my name was utterly ruined in my own eyes. Like all I ever knew was Toms were just like Tom, same as Johns. They were just bl- normal bloke yeah, names. Yeah. Like, and then I I was in Edinburgh one year, and my my room was straight across the way from these really really posh, like well you know wealthy middle class lads who were doing yeah. their whole show through the medium of ukuleles i mean I, I, we, I, you could hear their show every day coming through the fucking wall and all i wanted to do was bust all their ukuleles and out of the five of them three of them were called tom i was like oh that's oh stop one was Come called on, tiff one was actually called tiff and i i, I don't honestly know the other but three of them called tom like something, has to, something to begin with t as well Seems to be criteria for the UK Lely band. Yeah, Tarquin, yeah. I would say. Most likely Tarquin. <laughs> Jesus, Mary and Joseph. You're and you're are you okay right now? Because I understand you're not actually in the county of Cork. Are you are you okay? Like, is there yeah, any medication you're taking? Like, like I am on meds and I have to do, I have an inhaler with me. Do you know what I mean? The altitude is different. Uh <laughs> I love that the inhaler isn't actually for asthma, it's actually got just essence of cork. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! But yeah, I love that. Do you know I love Dub- Dublin taxi men? I think they're hilarious. Oh. The funniest thing ever. Did they all have a story about Cork? Yeah, they all have some story. Like, oh, they're just so funny. Just I don't know. I just I just love their character, a sense of character. They were telling you mad stuff like. And it seems to be I found like if you, if you get them during the day, great. The warmest characters you'll ever meet. But the later through the night you get. The kind of you're kind of trying to steer them away from saying racist stuff, basically, is what what I found. Well, that, yeah, that's taxi men in general, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no problem oh, with it, right? Yeah. Oh, the all sure they start going on lately you now that instead of racism, it's like, oh, do you get the vaccine? You're like, oh, here we fucking go now. Like, so we're stuck in this car together. Like, but, uh, there's a fella who was telling me he got a dog during the pandemic. He was off, and he was one of the people who shouldn't be working or whatever. And he's like, it was named some like fancy Hollywood name. He was like, it was called Autumn. And he was like, I am me for calling him Autumn. So he like uh, had to rename him something. So he's like, I renamed him Judo. And he's like, I think it's Japanese for arsehole. <laughs> <laughs> what? Like, 
yeah. I don't know but, if we, we have to fact check that. I don't know if that's correct. But there's that next is. there's next to no species like them on the planet, like because no matter where you go, you won't like London cabbies can be good crack, all right, because they'll give you a, a right bit of chat, but it's not the same because it's through a window. You know, you feel like you're talking. You know, it's literally next door. You're talking to somebody, but like my naivety, the first time I went to America. I got out and the boys couldn't meet me at the airport because they were all illegal, like, and they'd be picked up. <laughs> so I went with an address. I figured, I kind of looked at the map and went, yeah, I, yeah, it's not that far to go. But I found myself sitting in the front with the taxi driver. <laughs> and, he was, and he was a guy, he was a Cameroonian guy. He'd only just landed himself, the fucker. <laughs> He'd just gotten a job yeah. faster than I did. But he was kind of going, uh. And then I copped the big plastic shield behind us and I, and it's too awkward now. It's you know you were I'm, there, you were in the front. Yeah, what we're gonna do clinch a little hole. Yeah. So <laughs> there was but the bands was not the same, needless to say. The, <laughs> the crack yeah. was not the same. They're probably super professional, I you know. But I, actually, do you know, is it illegal to get food delivered to a hotel? I no, don't know if it is. Why would it I, be I, illegal? I, I wasn't sure. I was Googling it up. I was like, is it illegal? And I was getting kind of mixed reviews online. I was like, I don't know. But I really wanted Chinese the other night. Do you know what I mean? So I I ordered Chinese. And I went down the front as if I was going to do some kind of a drug deal. (laughs) You know, like, (laughs) I like, I emptied a bag and all, like, brought it down with me. God forbid. Like, I didn't want to even see that I had the takeaway bag. Like, so like, but I was, if anything, I was probably just drawing more attention to myself. Do you know what I mean? Just sketchily kind of hanging out around the door. And um, yeah, I brought up the Chinese then, but sure, there's no knife and fork here. Do you know what I mean? So, <laughs> I, was like, I was like, oh my God, what am I going to do now? Like, so do you know them little, um, do you know the little sticks they give you for the coffee? Oh, I was just going to use two of them as a kind of a makeshift kind of a, <laughs> what are they called? Chopsticks, which would have been fine if I'd used chopsticks before. But uh, yeah, it was pretty grim. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah, I didn't know if it was illegal or not, so it's obviously not. Nah. Listen, at this stage, Sinead, fucking nearly everything is kind of illegal. Like, just say you're fucking playing sports. It'd be grand, like, just... <laughs> yeah. yeah, the spice bag is, is <laughs> pivotal to, I, the, to the sports, yeah. I love the notion, like, that you're down there standing all sketchy, like, and there's... But you walk back in with no signs of a Chinese on you, but everybody's going... Nah, I know uh, that's exactly that what I was like. I was like, if anyone gets in the lift, like, I'm like, what's going on here? So I was whistling and everything. I was like, <laughs> like what? I guess they hear the way. Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, yeah, yeah, it wasn't Rice Krispies, to be fair, yeah. There's yeah, a... that's just that's just me though. I don't know. I stress myself out with just random things that aren't even things. We well, see, at least you think about it. Like, I don't, yeah. I'm the opposite end of it. I'd go bullet in, like I'd order bullets. Do you know, like something ridiculous? Like, I go, what? What are you arresting me for? Like, do you know, like at least you had the consideration to go, maybe this might be off, you know, maybe. maybe. <laughs> no. no, I thought grenades are legal. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I know. And that's where, yeah. that's where I would find myself. The, I could sleep easy tonight. Because you're, you're up, and we, we'll talk about it later in the show, but to, to clarify to anybody, you need. Is yes, she is a, an extremely high roller. She lives only exclusively in hotels, actually. <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> what I do. It's a brand deal. Yeah. But you're because you're 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 up in Dublin at the minute filming your second series, aren't you? I am. Should I only come up here now? It's for a match or for work. I love <laughs> or that. Or like yeah. I love that. I'm sure there's an IKEA open in a cork soon. Is there? There is out oh, in, yeah, out in Little Island, apparently. Jesus. That's even yeah. one less reason now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, and with our, with our performance on Sunday, I wouldn't be sure if we'll be up again. Like, you know, I think they had their All-Ireland in the in the semi-final. In fairness to them, they yeah, were like... Yeah, we tried our best. Do you know, like, when, like, young dogs get really excited and they run after everything. Like, I think that's kind of what happened, Cork. Like, we're in the All-Ireland final! We've never... Really ever. And, like, Limerick are there, but four in the last four oh, years they've been there insane. three times like yeah so it's so in log was like it was like playing hurling against harry potter <laughs> <laughs> did he say that yeah yeah don't look it's uh, he bothers me he but bo- i don't know why but it's the use of the pen like and he's like he leans <laughs> way too he- like every like everybody from cork has a cork accent but it's like don Logue is putting it on you're like tone it down don Logue. jesus christ uh, like no. <laughs> like so like what i'm saying i i can't like he's a good character for the game but at the same time 
I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was. It, Jesus, I felt bad. The half the country were behind, well, more than half the country, including everybody from Tipperary, I can yeah. guarantee you, was fucking behind Cork. It was, <laughs> come Everyone on. likes the underdog. Like, they, we like to go for the underdog. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure, look. Yeah. What can you do? What can you do? What can, but you, you weren't one of the 40,000 that were there the other day, were you? Well, I was, like, on my way up. So I was watching it on the train, on my phone. Oh, but you, you didn't go? No, no. Did you drink cans just for the sake of it, just... I thought the train would be great crack, but it wasn't. There was nobody. I feel like they must have all been up the night before or something. There was they no were, real atmosphere. <laughs> they were definitely up. By all accounts, Dublin was half on the night before. Like, Yeah. I know. And, then it was a disappointment. I was like, if, if uh, the match was good, like I go for the celebrations, but then it was like, oh, sad times. Yeah, what do you do? Do you go out and just stand around? Although, I mean, you know, just for alcohol consumption all the same, like it would have been all right to do. But we... um. The last, like the, the the last time we ran into each other, we were actually in Limerick, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, that was uh, Flannery's, wasn't it? It was Jerry Flannery's cocktail bar. Of all of all things, you would imagine. It was a nice venue, wasn't it? It was, a, it was a really nice venue. It was, uh, it was like I don't know if they're going to do more in there or whatever, but it would be. And not- do you remember I got heckled in the most Limerick way? It was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. What was what it? did they say I or said- didn't they say? I was like, oh, so what else can I tell you about me? I was like, uh, I'm single. And then somebody just shouted out, Yort! <laughs> in the back. <laughs> Those I gang. I was like, wow. That gang of langers, like, I... And I was like, it was the most English heckle of all that are English, Jesus. It I was, a, no, but limerick. it was... It was Limerick. It was a Limerick phrase. But in all fairness, they were behaving like English lads at a fucking stag <laughs> yeah. in Brighton. Yeah. It was like nobody does what they were doing. It was like they read half a book on attending a comedy club and went, well, we're supposed to heckle, aren't we? Because I yeah, said, it, yeah. I pulled the manager over and I said, listen, are you going to talk to them? Like, and he went, be be, he's just be a bit awkward, don't it? I said, awkward. That's your <laughs> fucking job, man. Go down and fucking talk to him. That's because I launch into those guns. Like when I get down there, like, and you could see, he's like, oh, no, you know. I just couldn't help it. Like I just, I was trying to avoid him at one stage, and I went, "Ah, oh, fuck this!" And I just turned into. Like, <laughs> yeah, you went full ham on him. But yeah, yeah, I was like, it would have been a good story if we got together, though, wouldn't it? How'd you meet? Uh, well, he yelled "yurt" from a distance. Yeah. I, at yeah. what point, like, did you like? Obviously, they're doing it for each other's <laughs> entertainment. But at any point, like that, actually would have been the most neutralizing thing to ever do, for you to turn around and go, "Oh, hello." Uh, you want to leave your number up here afterwards, you know, because yeah. possibly the most unattractive thing you could do to somebody is shout at them just a, a word that doesn't actually really exist <laughs> yeah. or mean anything like just, and go, mm, you had me at you. Like, yeah, I love your I love the word goal. I love that word. Goal. I, I use that a lot. You get. Yeah. I mean, I think Limerick, I, I don't know, Cork people use nearly as much as Limerick, do they? Yeah, I think so. Because go like Limerick people would claim it for their own, but like. Even I was using gaul in school. Like everybody called each other because you can just lean into that G so heavily. Like, yeah, it's, oh, it's such a great word. Like, it's a great, great word. word. It's a fucking great word. But like, because you, that evening it was, I, I knew you were doing stand up and I'd heard your name or whatever before, but I'd never properly come across you. But it was, you were into it. Like, had you, like, were you, like, and you, by all accounts, then you were telling me you weren't doing stand up that long. But, like in, you came across as somebody who was at a three or four or five years at that stage. Well, thanks. Are thanks you so are you from a very talky family or are you an actor or wait, like something has to be, you know, or were you were you a middle child like me? Uh, no, I only have one brother, Eamon. So okay. he's two years younger than me. He's an electrician. Uh, we're total opposites. Like now he always knew like he wants to be an electrician, like he was like I'm not going to college like this is what I want to do genius young fella yeah genius. Oh, making sure a fortune sure absolutely like he definitely did the right thing yeah unbelievable <laughs> um I never knew what I wanted to do not a clue uh so I got into stand-up kind of accidentally really but yeah I don't know I think I do mask probably my nerves quite well yeah I think that's yeah, probably yeah. a skill that's a skill I've always had I don't know how but like you, it, a lot of it for me was in your stance you had a very calm yeah. stance. Normally, people that are masking their their nerves with their stance, they do an awful lot of fucking old pacing back and forth. And you're going, La- girl or fella, you're f- you're absolutely showing off your nerves. Stop yeah. pacing. Whereas you kind of have this, all right, but <laughs> you have this, <laughs> all right, <laughs> like you're like you're out, yeah. you're on pen and you're getting the fucking outside <laughs> hillbillies. Like just go. 
All right. Hillbilly. Now that you say hillbillies, that's where my comedy career began. Go on. In, in hillbillies, eating a taco fries. Um, you went into hillbillies and ordered a taco fries. <laughs> yeah, all the not things. Had it. Yeah, I have, but like at the same time, I wouldn't be blow like in hillbillies. I mean, obviously, you'd gone through the full repertoire of all the chicken. Probably they had. like yeah. breast and the bun and all that would probably be more popular. It's true, but taco fries for me would be my thing. Like, um... cheese. <laughs> no, I just, I just want to know because now I'm fucking hungry. Cheese and would you go for a sprinkle in the cheese? Oh, everything. Yeah. Oh, good. Cheese. Yeah. Great. Yeah, yeah. Great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. But yeah, it was my dad had seen, I'd only done two stand-up gigs. My dad seen in the paper, this Ray Darcy competition oh, looking yes. for new stand-up. So he said it to me anyway, he was like, you should end that there. I was like, dad, I've done two gigs. Like, what are you talking about? Like, <laughs> like if you looked up new in the dictionary, there'd be a photo of me inside there. Like, oh. Shiny, actually shiny. Yeah. Out of the box. Yeah. But like at that point, I'd taken a year out. So I did a master's in social work. And at the end of it, I was like, Nah, we're not doing that. <laughs> uh, so that went down very well with the family. They were like, "What do you mean? You did two year masters?" Like I was like, "No, nah, I don't know." And actually, maybe that's where I learned the kind of the demeanor as well, because as part of the masters, you had to they did this thing where you were recorded um, doing like an interview, and you had okay. to see did you do anything annoying? Because they were like, do you know, if you were like messing with your head or anything like that, like, it would be kind of distracting. Like that was one of the modules. So maybe that's kind of maybe where I got my masking of emotions thing yeah 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 but that is that's interesting because you then you become self-aware yeah do you know that and that's almost just down near shakespearean and how they teach you in acting and all the rest of it like is to be very aware and are you a pain in the hole by the things you do like because obviously in social work you don't want to send some somebody who's in savage form over yeah. the edge like because you keep yeah, on picking exactly. your nose or something like you know <laughs> literally yeah we're taking the kids uh yeah <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I think, yeah, probably I was training for a stand up without really realizing it. Probably, you know, it wasn't really planned. But anyway, we were in Hillbillies and he was after telling me about that competition. He was like, Did you send in the clip of that? So he'd recorded my second um, stand up gig. You only need three minutes, three, where, three minute clip. Where was your, where was your, where was your first stand up gig? The first one was in Wonky Donkey. Um, oh, right. Yeah. Ross, Ross had Wonky Donkey. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I was opening up for the Hardy Bucks, the well, three bucks left. Yes, um, French, yeah. Cowboy and French sauce. And um, salmon. So they were yeah. doing a car. So I was opening up for them. I met them at a random mental health event um, where I was doing public speaking. <laughs> Jeez, I'll tell you one thing. If we were backing up a truck right now, Sinead, we'd have gone through a fucking forest. You just were like, so... Uh, <laughs> nothing, nothing, nothing makes sense. You're like, what? <laughs> Hold on. So that was just a, that was just to get to the second gig. But we went to the first and then we'll open for the three bucks left. You know the way French toast. And if I, to be fair, anybody listening to this podcast knows because French toast is like two episodes ago and Cowboy was like five episodes ago. So that's great. But and then you were open up for the boys, but you met them at a, a mental health. Uh, yeah, so they were they were doing the MCing for that. Um, so I met them. Um, this was during the year out. So I was just doing random things. So I kind of said to them, I was like, come here, I'm thinking about getting into stand-up, like, do you have any advice? And they were like, look, next time we're in Cork, like, we'll give you a call. I was like, oh, yeah, like, I'll never hear from these boys again, like, do you know what I mean? They're just being nice. And then they rang me up in, like, the September and were like, yeah, we're going to be in Cork there in October, like, go you fix. I was like, oh, God, I kind of have to do it now, like, (laughs) they're not. Yeah, because does it, because surely, like, this shit hits the bed at that stage. You're like, oh Jesus, I, I was just saying yeah. it. Now it's actually because you can't but back still that. So naive though. Like I'd never been to like I'd been to like see people like Des Bishop and yeah. like the Everyman. Do you know what I mean? But I'd never been to open mic or like I had no clue really like about how it works. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So I rocked up to this professional comedy club, do you know what I mean? For my first gig. I'd like a couple of notes and a bit of paper. Actually, I went way over. I ended up doing 20 minutes because I'd, I'd put too much down. Like, um, and I remember they were like flashing me, not in a <laughs> sexual way, but flashing me with, with, the, with the light, you know, to tell me for, to get off. For anybody stage. wondering, that's a, that's a very normal thing to see. If you've gone way over and over, there's somebody down the back flashing the light on their phone going, get yeah. off, will you? <laughs> so like I seen it the first time and like I knew, like, but I was like, I didn't really know how to like stop. Yeah. <laughs> Of course, you know, it's your first planned. ever gig. There's people ten <laughs> years in don't know how to shut up, like and get off stage. 
like the light was getting more and more aggressive. Do you know what I mean? Like they're sweating. <laughs> I was like, oh god, I gotta get off. Anyway, I finished it. But like we laugh about it now, like, but um yeah, so that was my first gig. So thankfully that went fairly well. It wasn't amazing. I would say like 65% of it was good. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And bad. I guarantee you, Sinead, you look back at that in a year and go, What was I on about? Like, do you know? Because you'll be <laughs> you'll be 20 times sharper, you know, that kind of way. Like, even if the context yeah. was good, you're like and woman and Anne and fucking arson around the houses I was doing to try and get to a point like but yeah exactly but that's always good I I thankfully I a very similar experience very similar where I had no clue what I was signing myself up for but yeah. about 60 percent of it was goodish it was good enough yeah. that, and I, to be fair right, I was like, very lucky I was on with some unbelievably dire comedians so I <laughs> you know so yeah. it, it was That's the grand. trick to getting compliments, isn't it? As well, if you if you look terrible as well, like majority of the time, then the one time you get dressed up, people are like, "Oh my god, you're amazing!" I mean, Thanks so much. I showered. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't get it. I don't get it much <laughs> yeah. actually. It's people compliment stuff behind me, like you did. You went nice background, Tom. Yeah, no, I love move. the mullet. The mullet is all in fashion as well. I didn't want it to be fashionable, Sinead. I yeah, and I did this messing. My wife dared me uh, right at the beginning of lockdown. It was like, well, it'd be. Do you want to cut my hair? Because she, you know, she's cut my hair a few times for the crack. Because really, I don't yeah. care much about it. She went, let's cut in a mullet this time. And OK, for yeah. the crack, let's do it. And then it just kind of and then all of a sudden I start finding out a mullet has actually become popular. I'm like, oh, no. yeah, it's proper thing. But I, I actually have like I, I, I talked about getting rid of it. And I got like 40 messages from patrons and listeners going, don't you get rid of it. Like, I, like they're living oh. vicariously through my mullet in their office jobs, but they're not allowed to have a mullet. So I was like, all right, yeah, okay. I love it as well. Yeah. Let's, let's keep it, it really going. Really like, because you ha- you're a wild fella, like, do you know what I mean? You're a madman. Like, there's a bear there behind you over your head. Yeah. Like, it, just, it suits you well. I didn't, I didn't factor <laughs> it in. It's just kind of naturally arrived, if you know what I mean. It was like, oh, well, yeah. I But again, because I gave the thumbs up and in my wife thought it was a good idea, so... Yeah, I suppose you're right. Yeah, the fitting. It'd be weird if you put it on somebody who, you know, Clarence, who was like, you know, head of accounting in in, in a software yeah. company. It'd be, yeah, a bit of an odd one. Yeah. So I'm, I'm getting in your way. So you do the first gig goes very, goes well. Oh, yeah. And always. So this, this is classic me you now trying to tell a story. Like there's about seven other stories. That's grand. That's grand. Um, so I did that one. So yeah, thankfully it went all right. And then Cornelius was there that night, so he runs the Coco Club. Yeah. So Cornelius Patrick Sullivan, he uses his full name. Um, <laughs> so he gave me the second gig. So then my parents went to that one, and my dad recorded it, whatever. Uh, so then all you needed was a three-minute clip to like enter this competition. So I had that. Um, so anyway, we're in Hillbillies, and he's like, "Did you throw in that entry, like?" And I was like, oh, shit, actually, I fucking forgot, like. And uh, I was like, oh, God, we looked up, like, online, like, when was the closing day? And it was that day at midnight. We were like, oh, my God. So as soon as I went home, then I entered that. So if it wasn't for a taco of fries and hillbillies, <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have entered it on time. And I wouldn't be doing comedy, like. So it's pretty crazy. So God bless hillbillies. I mean, you're going to yeah. now, obviously. I mean, clearly, this has been a, a poking for sponsorship which there are yeah, worse if i don't get a sponsorship yeah there are worse sponsors you could get to be fair than hillbillies that'd be a real one like, oh, oh jesus that'd christ be, but dream. It, like i've often said at cork you're spoiled rotten with the quality of grub down there even when you want fast food the, like there's gourmet fast food like it's good stuff yeah my you know, cousin we, is up in dublin she was saying she struggles to get like a good chinese in dublin i don't know if that's true but it's the true had, the other night was all right but yeah. yeah, I'd say yeah, but the struggle you went through to actually physically eat it, Sinead, in all fairness, <laughs> yeah. you'd be you were like literally a starving person with two knitting needles <laughs> trying to poke it into your mouth, like going, This might be the best Chinese I've ever had. <laughs> you had to... eating like one grain of rice at a time, like yeah. The, uh, so you send so, it in. So you I'm send it in. Burning. And what happens? Obviously, you went because I you told me you, I know you won it, didn't you? But how did it how did it come so, about? Because I sent it in and then I I kind of forgot about it like a, I'd say about a month went by and I heard not and I was like so I got I didn't go to get in like do you know what I mean and I wasn't really expecting it so that's fine so I was actually supposed to be moving to Australia so <laughs> okay <laughs> right. let's throw a bit of spice in here and make the story really interesting Tom 
I was supposed to be an immigrant into Australia. So like I'd taken the year out or whatever. And I was like, I knew I didn't want to do social work. So I was like, I'm just going to head off to Australia. Yeah. Figure, figure something out over there. So it was proper going in, going to go into use it, get the flights and all that. And yeah. start starting the visa and stuff. And I got an email that evening saying that I'd gone into the monster heats. So I was like, oh. So I said it to my two friends and they were like, look, maybe hold off on the tickets. So I was like, chance of me winning now are very slim. But they were like, just hold off until you do that. Fair play so like, to them now. Like, you would know like who you'd meet or whatever. I was like, all right. Um, so I did that. Um, then I ended up winning that, which is crazy. Where was the expect. monster heat then? That was in city limits. Great, right. So Cal Spain was the MC that night. So it was the first time meeting him. Of course it was. So Spain. Funny. Class. He's what a legend. Yeah. He's just been any competition that's ever been put on ever. Yeah. Get Carl Spain. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. He works a room. Uh, so I remember he was like talking to us all beforehand. So I actually had double the experience by the time that came around. So I'd done four gigs. Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he was asking like all of us, like a little bit about our, like ourselves. And I was like, oh, yeah, like this is my fifth gig now. And he was like, sorry, what? I was like, my fifth gig and he was just like good luck with that like you know um so yeah it's funny looking back at me we're good friends now me and Kyle but yeah little do we think but in fairness you'll know Carl likes you if he starts just giving you shit like that like oh yeah, he's yeah. still a kid you know yeah he was like what's going on here like so and who yeah. go on who else was in the the monster final with you so the monster final I love that like you were playing your cork and you were obviously playing Limerick or whoever you were playing in the Munster final. Make, let's make this sports. So, like, I remember it was so crazy. I was like, what is happening here? Like, saw Ray Darcy, saw Fred Cook was there, Julie, I don't know, was, I think Julie J was there too. Uh, Barry Murphy, Darren Smith, Clint Entertainment. Uh, they were all, like all the judges. And then, sure, I didn't know anyone in comedy. Do you know what I mean? And they were yeah. looking at me being like, who the hell is this? Like, all the people I was up against. They were like, like, where she have to come from? Because it's such a small world. Like, I didn't realize. Do you know what I mean? And so there was Roger. What's his name? Roger Sullivan. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. From Cork, yeah. And oh. I've seen on Chris. He runs the uh, Cock, Cocklands. Collins. Yes, I know the lads. They, the two lads had, were, I met the two. I know the two lads around about because they had a smashing room out in the White Horse and Melancholic, and it's unfortunately gone. But it was the most gorgeous room upstairs in, in the White Horse and Balancholic. I know the two lads you're on about all right. Two, two yeah. nice chaps. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. They're so nice. Uh, there's a girl from Kerry. There's a fella from Kerry as well. So bad, I can't remember their names. So I've met no one. This is, this, is, this is classic. This is classic championship stuff. You know, you, <laughs> you're like, uh, listen, all I know is there was a whole pile of losers and this and this guy. That's all I'm saying. You right? sound like such an asshole. Yeah, I'm like, I, 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 <laughs> I can't remember names at all, but like I've never met them again. You see? Yeah, of course. Of course. Oh, no, I'm I'm absolutely painting as a pure bollocks here. Like, yeah, is, yeah, no, it's great. It's great. It's great. <laughs> we'll round it up at the end and say how sound you are and everything else. Like. It's a freak. <laughs> <laughs> that's your new. That's your new show. <laughs> oh my god! But it was yeah. such a blur. Like the whole thing, I was like, "What is happening?" Do you know what I mean? Like my family were there. They were looking at me, being like, "What's going on here?" Uh, my friend, uh, she was working till like whatever. She was doing night shift. She was like, I'll try to get there like in time or whatever to see it. And there was no sign of her anyway. And I was waiting to go on. And then I just seen her coming in the door. I was like, ah, oh, there she is. So like I wasn't nervous or nothing. Because I was like, sure, I have absolutely nothing to lose here. Do you know what I mean? Who am I <laughs> like, coming in? That's a great place to be. Yeah, 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 yeah. So if anything, the nerves only started afterwards. Do you know what I mean? Because suddenly there was like a bit of an expectation. Then I was like, oh, shit, like. I'm still a complete newbie to this. Um, yeah, I don't know. I was cool as a breeze at me. So you wiped help. the floor with everybody there. You smashed their faces into the carpet. And <laughs> you're through. through you erased through. their names. You erased their names. You're all dirt to me. Um, I'll remember Spain because I'll probably have to meet you again. Uh, Barry Murphy. <laughs> yeah, probably. Anyway, let's get to the final. Come on. So <laughs> final. I sound so mean. Yeah. But yeah, I've never yeah. met those people. I'm sorry. They were sound. They mean nothing to you. It's okay. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. And you get to the, you get to final then. So, so the, was the final on telly? Am I mistaken? It was, wasn't yes. it? Yes. Live TV. I mean, what the hell was that like? Yeah. There's um, 
there was a girl called Audrey was looking after us, you know, behind the scenes. And like, like oh, yeah, I am a fairly laid back person. Like I wouldn't get nervous easy, but like I tell you, the nerves I felt that night were unbelievable. Like, like she actually gave me a hug and everything at one of the points. Like she it, was like, what's her? I, I must have just looked at state. Like, I think I know the Audrey you're on about. Yeah, and she's a hundred percent. Yeah, I think I, I know. Sounds. Yeah, 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 yeah. And who who did you wipe the floor with that night? Or can you remember? Doesn't matter. <laughs> Don't they, remember. They're dead to you. Uh, Mike Rice. Oh, Mike Rice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, Justine Stafford. Very good. So bad. There's another girl from England. What's her name? I'm so bad at names. It's all right, Janine. She's English. Stop, you're making me look so bad. She's English. It's fine. So, I mean, we all, you know, we know what way politically Sinead lies at the moment. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. I'm such a prick. I'm just shocking at names. No, to be fair, to be fair, yeah. the two people that, that, which is ironic, is the two people that uh, Sinead can remember is Justine, who's gone on to do very well for herself, and Mike, who's yeah. flying it for himself over in Europe. And he is flying it. So, you know, just goes to show Sinead only has regard for people that have actually... You know, Should you of. have Googled this? Isn't that's not your job? Should do you have any research on their job? <laughs> this is come here. I I I did there was rakes of them competitions when I was coming up right at the beginning. For some reason it was rakes of them. Like so I and I couldn't fucking tell you hardly anybody went to, like I won a couple of them, but Jesus Christ, she couldn't because you have to be really self-involved in the night because it's actually the nerves are taking over and stuff like. But the I'm lucky uh, to remember my own name, to be honest. I'm so nervous so badly. Like, because I, that, I, I remembered my set kind of, so that was my aim. Tell me, what was it, what was it like doing it to the Ray Darcy audience? Because that must be fucking tough, was it? Life. Yeah, because sure, those audiences they don't choose to be there. Yeah. You know, they just they just put in like that yeah. they want to be, and I think it's like a look at a draw, like who's there, whatever. Because there's a um, free bar in the green room in RT, and that's why people show up. Like I, yeah. Oh my good lord! I can only that would have been a tough tough gig in all fairness like like we did one before all right it was filmed in the sugar club it was an all-ireland competition like and a few of us got to the final and stuff but no it was just happened to be filmed really badly <laughs> but it was weird that didn't mic up any of the audience and the audience were actually what well, was killer they were really good but they didn't mic them so oh no yeah it literally looked and their cutaways i remember they cut away to um a friend of mine who was there a different night who wasn't there the night i was there so they just use random footage of people. And it was what? one where, where he was just looking away. It was like, why would you use? <laughs> so it can it can go either. But at least they, they had the idea of not to do it live in front of it. Because I've, I've done the warm up for a few of them shows. And those people do. They don't want to. Oh, God, they don't want to see happiness. Like, <laughs> like, yeah. And I think right, they're, yeah. they're kind of weirded out, too, by the, the big room and the lights and there's cameras on them they're weirded out it's, by a, the whole it's thing, a lot right? for everybody yeah, yeah we're all trying to get our bearings so yeah and we were in this kind of a box thing but i remember like i was supposed to be on second and then they put me on first last minute but i was like this is probably a good thing because i just yeah. need to get out there get <laughs> you know just need to get because at that state i was in such a state i was like i just need to get out there um yeah. but it was grand grand in that you won it like so yeah, yeah, I guess. <laughs> no, it's totally. That was grand, Tom. You know, in the end, it didn't really bother me that much. I totally won it and get smushed, everybody. It's fine. It's fine. Like, that was um, that was my seventh. That was my seventh gig then. So I, I love like, that. Mother of God. <laughs> 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 then I'm kind of like plunged into the comedy world. You know, I'm like, what's going on here? Um, it's yeah, crazy. But sure, was then, I was only doing it about six months or then we were in lockdown, like, so... Yeah, I mean, how did you, what was the, what was your go-to move then with lockdown? Because obviously you were only getting going, so you were like, you didn't even fully understand what being, probably being up and flying at five nights a week was going to be. But yeah. what was the move then? Because, you know, did did your show, like, because you won. And in that, they didn't they give you like a... a so I won. I, I then had to sit down with my friends be like, what's the story? Should I go to Australia? Well, I do. <laughs> they were like... You have to stay, like, do you know what I mean? This is a, this is some opportunity. I was like, yeah, I have to give it a go. Like, they're like, look, if you're going to stay, like, at least make it worthwhile. So, thankfully, it's worked out fairly all right. So, I got a pilot. That was part of the, part of the prize. That's so, an ama- low, that, That's better than any money. That is a great, yeah, it's a great prize. Yeah, but it was like you can make it, like, like 
they, they'll read it, but they're, they might not make it, do you know? Okay. So it wasn't like guaranteed. So it Classic was like, RTE. Grand. <laughs> yeah. So I wrote it in the first lockdown. So something to do. How bad? Um, did that, whatever, sent it off. So thankfully they liked it. They were like, yeah, we'll make it. It's like sound. So there were four or five minute episodes. Because it... When I watched it, I was go because do you know you were just about how you I launched into it and I was like, What am I watching? Is that sh- that's Sinead's voice over everybody, isn't it? Because I'm an idiot. Yeah. I had to f- and then I had to back up the track and go, Oh now I know what I'm watching. Oh now now I know what I'm because at first I'm going, I is that somebody else? it's definitely not his voice, but is it so why did oh fucking wait. This is Sinead is reading her diary. Oh, for the love of Christ almighty. Yeah. Yes, so yes, it's right. A, it's a lip sync series. No. Uh, which is cool because like, it makes things that aren't funny funny as well do you know what I mean so, like uh, my voice coming out of an old man is hilarious do you know it, was that now was that what you how you wrote it so the plan was that I would actually be doing stand up and like telling the stories and then it would cut to like me acting out with people yeah but then of course pandemic happened so that we changed then for a diary but it works out well I think it works good like writing in the diary so you hear what I'm writing I think because I thought that at first it was, this is almost like a stand up thing. So that, but then I thought it was, you'd never planned on doing the stand up. And I think it was a smart move in a way. It was a lucky move because for a lot of people to watch you doing stand up is not translatable for them. They're going, well, I have no concept of what she's doing right now. So we'll just wait till the next bit until she explains it. Cause they can't put themselves possibly in your shoes, but they can with a diary sitting on a bench. You know that kind of way. Yeah, that's it, true. It that would be. True, a, it's a stretch for a lot of people because you can't turn around and go. Do you know when you're up here trying to remember your jokes? People go, no, no, I have no <laughs> idea what that means. I can't relate to that in the slightest. That's. Yeah. I have to be honest, there, Sinead. Nah, never yeah. come across that situation in my life, and never want to, because for most people, it's. I know there's something gone very wrong for all of us that we feel the need to even get up on the stage. Yeah. Something, something not right with us. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Yeah. Cause you, with the amount of good gigs are great, but you will have your dire gigs and to come back and want to do it after that again, like you yeah. did, if you don't have a mental condition, you'll get a mental condition from it. Like, <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I'm going like, like the whole concert, it makes no sense because there's so much isolation in, in it. Do you know what I mean? That like you write it yourself, you practice it yourself. And then with nobody having heard it, you get up in front of a room full of strangers and do it. Like it just makes no sense. No, you're a hundred percent right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And I've, listen, I've tried to sit down and write with other lads and there's, there was great notions. There was a gang of us kind of all kind of coming on at the same time. And we're like, let's have a writer's room and stuff. And write. And it never panned out because you're like, we've all so many different processes. Like when it comes to it, like if yeah, it becomes suddenly work if you're on. And we did it for a good while. Like, and we got, you know, we wrote some good stuff and it was probably what it was very good for was my, was actually a form of the group was very good for my very first hour show that I was did in the Dublin Fringe and then took to Edinburgh because we were all, we all had to do it for each other. And we all rehearsed like it was an act act, like we were actors. Yeah, so cool. I had probably done 20 times that hour and we all had seen each other's 20 hours. And in fairness, it was we were able to tweak each other's just enough. Like none of us were that experienced. Like, but by the time it hit the stage, then I was there was no remembering it. It was like, yeah, well, here we go. Re- ready to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So which for you? The, so had you an acting background then as well? No, nothing professional at all. Um, I was I. In, again in the year out I joined my local drama group for the so crowd down, down the hall yeah um, auditioned for a role so I got a tiny role of a girl who was grieving the death of her father so it's it laugh a minute no doubt <laughs> it sounds very tragic but it's one of these Irish plays that like he dies in a cabbage plot right falls down dead very sad Lovely. and then by the end of it I come in and I'm like he wasn't dead at all he was just in a deep sleep uh, so <laughs> I love that's how they fucking wrapped it up. They went, he wasn't dead at all. He was just sleeping. Yeah. So that was that one. So that was my acting like. <laughs> Twas a role, I suppose. <laughs> it was a role. It was a role. So, but it was a great crack. Like I just loved, I loved the whole experience of it. But I guess it's stand up so different. Like 
because one thing I found was that it was slightly stressful in a plane that if the other person doesn't remember their line or if you forget your line everyone's a bit thrown you know yeah. like I mean I only had like five lines so if I forgot it it would have been pretty bad but like you do really depend on the other people like you have to it's so different like at least if you kind of messed up yourself on stage like nobody's gonna know yeah but I, I the thing I found from theatre work was it really does help it helps in both directions so I would do the the, the pro panto in Limerick every year for the university concert hall and now they didn't bring me on because I could sing or dance I can do neither but they would bring me on purely to be me basically <laughs> So I would always, I'd always seem to play a part of idiot authority, if you know what I mean, the stupid cop or whatever, like, but it didn't really, it, it was literally just Tom with a name. But what I would do is if things went a small bit awry, you'd see the real actors, because they'd bring people who had been in Rada, like proper fucking actors, like, you know, who really minded yeah, themselves, yeah. They minded their skin and their breath, you know, they'd be breathing these fucking things in the evening and everything, but when things go awry, you can see their eye twitching going, what, what now? And because of stand-up, you're like, era, big red. And you just... Yeah, yeah. But then flip it back the other way, the discipline of doing that for 30 days, twice a day, and actually rehearsing for two weeks solid, and every word had to be on. By the time you go, you find yourself go back to stand-up, you're like, oh, Jesus, right. I need to pull up my socks here. This arson about with wasted words in between lines that aren't needed at all. Like, you know, you're just... Literally yeah. saying the word like too often, or you're saying um or ah. they absolutely do. And I'd say, but especially when you rotate that back to stand up now again after doing, you know, seriously Sinead, I'd say the discipline of it because you have to be disciplined, surely. Like, you know, they're not just going after you go, look, you know, yeah, yeah, it's true. I know, and I wrote it then as well, which is totally different, like writing a script, brilliant. So like, oh, yeah. And I who YouTube. treated it for you then, or who helped you? How to, how to write a script onto YouTube. Like, literally, didn't have a clue. Um, I'd say the first one, it was um, the girls who wrote the Ashling book. Oh, yes. Uh, do you know? Yeah, Nina yeah, Nath yeah. Lassus and Sarah Breen. Brill- yeah, because it's kind of awkward isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's me. One- yeah. It's me. It's me, but a more exaggerated version of me. So, like, you know, for comedy purposes. But yeah, it more or less is me. I just have a ridiculous life. Ridiculous things happen to me. Like, do you know? Yeah, uh, I don't have to try. In, case in point, the last 40 minutes of how you just seem to meander into comedy and end up with your own TV show. Like, they guarantee you this comedians <laughs> hate you right now. Like, there's... Oh, go- I say so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. everybody on those lineups name. that you absolutely rinsed when you were doing those, you know, those those competitions. You're like, well, you got it, you got it. That's all I'm saying. That's, that's all I'm saying. Just- but I'm just a go, like, do you know what I mean? Like, I never thought, like... <laughs> I never thought it would lead to anything. Don't I mean anything I did, but oh, I think but... maybe like it helped me. I don't know. I kind of probably have my own style. That I was never in yeah. comedy clubs, so maybe I don't know. No, but don't a, a clue. it sounds like the perfect storm too. At the same time, like in that, you know, they were they did probably didn't know they were looking for a, a seriously Sinead. Do you know that kind of way? Like, and you just land like you ended up winning the competition. It wasn't like they were going. What we'll do is we'll find a tall woman from Cork. You know they. <laughs> They, they, there's no way they went looking for that but it was the perfect term and you could have just shit the bed too also and capitulated and had nothing for them do you know and go oh yeah they're like you know are you not going to write it for me like you know you could have been that person but you didn't you went fine let's give it a go so so there's and also so, you know so naive like but I think I'm someone who I'll give anything a lash do you know what I mean? clearly yeah. like but I mean, you, <laughs> uh, not one bit qualified for anything wait, but... you, you finished your degree and went on and did a master's and went era Shut that. <laughs> you know? yeah, so you gave that a like, six year, a five, six year lash. You know yeah. I did do six years of college. I know. My dad thought he was going to have to get the army, get me out of the place. We were going to leave. Like... Where did you go? UCC? UCC, yeah. Of course, pure Cork. Of course. Of course. Yeah, yeah. Hogwarts. So why would you go anywhere else? Like, best yeah, college? why would yeah. you go anywhere else? I know. My two sisters are absolutely oh. diehard UCC. Like, yeah. Loved yeah. it. Like, loved it. Well, I never asked yeah, what part, think... par- part of Cork are you from? Near Blarney. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of, yes. Yeah. yeah, I know Blarney well. Every Blarney son. Every, every Mason, every Blackley or Mason I worked with is either living in, they were even li- living in Grand or Blarney, one or the other. Because I worked, yeah. with, I worked, because construction I worked with, worked in before I went into comedy. Because it was flying at Donna Cork. It was great. We were all making a fortune at the time. But then 
the good times. I feel yeah. like I never properly experienced the good times. I've known nothing but misery. You're you are just you were just shy of it, Sinead. Oh Jesus, yeah. you only missed the skiing holidays by a fucking couple of months. <laughs> I swear to God, you only just missed them. They were great. They were yeah, great. I was like, I didn't know. Get any Celtic tire, like it's an absolute disaster. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I never Jesus I'm so sad I'm I, I have considered because you're like yeah in fairness you just missed it ah yeah. shit my great times yeah. we were a bit putting jacuzzis <laughs> in our houses and everything it was great like just, <laughs> we had no business doing it mind because we're Irish and we shouldn't be doing those things like but not, at the same yeah. time we're not built for it yeah I'm sure we gave it a go we yeah we gave so yeah. Australia then look girls the girls were gone so, yeah, so, and I mean, it was a kind of a, like, sure, of course they were going still, do you know what I mean? They're my two best friends. Ah, oh, shit. Is, yeah, so it was actually quite a decision, do you know what I mean? We were all geared up for this big adventure together, like, um, and sure, at that point as well, like, it wasn't guaranteed they were going to make anything. So, but I was like, sure, look, worst case scenario, they're like, nah, I'll just head out then. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just head out later, like, and so it just worked out well, like, that they... They made that. And then, sure, of course, the day the series came out, it came out the 31st, uh, what, what, 31st of what month is Halloween? Uh, October. So as if things weren't scary enough, like it came out that day. Um, but on that same day, I was off to Dublin to do the dress rehearsal for the den. So uh, it was like one thing kind of led into another. Just crazy. The den was insane. Like I still, I still pinched my little around like that even happened. So you got to host a den. Well, I wouldn't call it hosting. I Co-host. was there. Co-host <laughs> I was <a> there. <laughs> like to be fair to Ray Darcy, a great time for him. He's just so nice to me the whole time. Like I, again, strolling in, do you know what I mean, for the den, like live TV. And Joe, there's a big um a big long corridor on RT. Yeah. And so I walked in there not knowing what was gonna happen. And he was on the very opposite end of uh the hallway and he was like, Oh, Sinead Quinlan, like down the hall or whatever. Brilliant. How are things good? Um, they're so sound. Johnny, the boys, Dustin, Zig and Zag, so, so nice. Um, but again, so naive. Like, I didn't have a clue what I was doing. Like, I had that one experience of live TV for the competition. Yeah. But, like, this was totally different. Do you know what I mean? Um, how yeah, did, how did you it. keep it together? Like, the giddiness of just being on the den as well, like, dur- during the whole... Because, like, this is the I know. Den. They're my heroes. Like, yeah. They're everyone's heroes. Uh, Jesus. The only person I was playing a cool the whole time. The only person I lost my cool for was when I saw Zuppy. Ah, stop. I, I love Zuppy. Like, saw him and I was like, oh my God, Zuppy. Like, lost it for him. Um, but yeah, everyone else, I was kind of just masking it. Do you know what I mean? I was losing my shit, but I was like, this is fine. This is totally normal. This is okay. Do you find yourself um, far the crack leaning heavily into the Cork accent just to create a point of difference? Like, just in a situation like that? Yeah, I don't like I don't want to do it on purpose, but it just kind of happens. Yeah, I don't know. It gets stronger. Like I don't know. I don't know what it is. It's like don't like, look. Like, like when... <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Is it like a defense mechanism of sorts? <laughs> I just really don't know. Yeah, I'm gonna let p- people, the listeners here, anybody who cork people actually don't sound like that at all. So when you're down there, they're very, very flat accents. It's just when they leave the yeah. county bounds, or does anybody around? This so starts... many different types. You know, there actually is. Even they're pretty posh. Can I say even? Yeah, that would be C4. Yeah, yeah, because I lived out in Rochestown, kind of that direction, all right? Like, and there was, they weren't just, you just sell Murphy's above the bar, and you're like, what the fuck? Where the fuck yeah. are you from? Like, because all the lads song, I hung um, out with. Song The Langer. Do you remember that one? Oh, I do. Rare natural Gas. Yeah. Great song. Yeah. Uh, certainly not down across the even. You know, there's so many different accents. Like, I do, because it was, song. there was, um, there was I I was build, working down across Avon as well, and like the the people you're meeting, you're like, oh right, so this you're completely transferable to D four. You're absolutely you're wearing the same clothes, same kind of car. This is just, right. So, but of course, yeah. Sure. And then one of the times I had to do a small job out in or pricing a job out in, I was it was heading for West Cork, and it was in this bar. They were knocking this part of the bar, and they wanted to build. And I can honestly say I spoke to this man for an hour maybe 16, 17 actual words. And you're like, but you're only from up the oh road from God. friends of mine, like who I can understand what is going on here. Like, yeah. like, no, no, 
the vast like it was no, but this guy was just so country. It was just hello, 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 hello. You run away and cider. Okay, I got cider. Yeah, I get it. I get it. That sounds like all my uncles. Oh my god. But you translator like. Yeah, because you're getting into the countryside around Blarney, then you're heading up to like I suppose White's Cross, is that up that neck of the woods, and then Dunamore. Yeah, you're heading into yeah, yeah. Yeah, go see family from Dunamore. But and yeah, what's and what's what's the current process at the minute then? Like, are you up early in the morning now? Tomorrow morning we'll say call time. Or what's the crack? How long will you be filming for as well? In other words, how long are you going to be out of Cork? I know, though you're straight there. Um I don't know, did I bring enough inhalers? But <laughs> <laughs> you glass some of the days. And yeah, we got a series two, which is incredible. Isn't so, it brilliant? That is class to hear, like. They're going to be longer episodes, which is good. Great. Um, not sure how much longer until it's like proper edited and stuff, but longer. Um, and there's a few familiar heads in it this time as well, which is exciting. Uh, the rest of their bodies are in it as well. So, I mean, Great, yeah. Oh, Jesus. I was yeah. just going to, going to only use their heads. Right. The budget cuts can only afford them from the neck up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so we're, I'm here for this week, next week, a bit of the week after. So yeah, a couple of weeks. Are they long, long days? Yeah, full days. Full days. So, yeah. So I'm up on my holidays. They were saying lousy, do you know what I mean? Because it was set in Cork last time, so they got to come down to me. Do you know what I mean? Camera ah, and stuff. Right. This time I came up to them. They were like, you didn't give us any holiday this time, Sinead, lousy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no hillbillies. Although I think there, wait now, there is a couple of hillbillies actually now in Dublin, I think. Oh, is there? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. There definitely, no, there definitely is. That was one in Waterford. Era. It wouldn't be the same, sure it wouldn't like the taco fries wouldn't be the same anyway. Come here, I've taken up enough of your time because obviously there's Chinese or something to I, I'm just saying that I don't think the food ordering is illegal. I'm just putting it out there. If yeah, you do. for legal reasons, if it is, uh, I definitely did not do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when can we expect and it is uh no, is it no tell me exactly how seriously Sinead is supposed to be said because I'm saying it flat on purpose, right? So it's not there is, a, there is, is a it a statement or is it a question? All oh, right. Okay. There's a question mark in there. So it's kind of seriously Sinead or seriously. I don't know. Whatever way you want to say it, as long as you're saying it, it's all because it's almost a perfect combo of two words, like because for anybody reading it would might mean vastly different things. Because Cork people have a very it's not a sarcastic way of speaking, but they do use sarcastic phrases rather than actually saying what they mean. Because like yeah. I I will, yeah. Like that clearly means I fucking no way, not a hope am I doing it. But seriously, Sinead, like that's yeah, something something my parents would have said a lot over the years. So you've done yeah. something or said something <laughs> ridiculous. Yeah, basically. Like it's me being an awkward human being, pants <laughs> in my arm, <laughs> like nothing runs smoothly, like you know, like even um I don't even know. Like I said, I just live life. Like things just happen to me that wouldn't happen to other people. Like I was supposed to be going on a date with this guy and uh, he texted me like the day before and he was like, um, oh, sorry about this, but I actually had to get the NCT done. And um, <laughs> the, o- <laughs> the only day available is the day I was supposed to be meeting up with you. And I was like, that's grand. Look, we'll reschedule. And he was like, no, nah, I was thinking maybe we could just like go to the NCT together. I was like, what? On a first date? Uh, I was like, what kind of goal do you think I am? Like, do you know what I mean? So off you we went sh- anyway. Please, yeah. please tell me. You did it. <laughs> I did a course. Course! It was a once-in-a-lifetime once opportunity, Tom. Did it pass? Uh, no, he failed. <laughs> <laughs> did he have another date afterwards? <laughs> no. Like, it just was... He was a fine fella. It just wasn't really working out. Do you know what I mean? But I actually was able to use the fact that he failed the NCT to my advantage. So at the end, I was like, look, I'm going to get the bus there. And he's like, don't be silly. Like, I'll give you a lift home. I was like, no, honestly, I wouldn't feel comfortable getting into a car that's just failing the NCT. <laughs> perfect. Absolutely oh, yeah. perfect. Well, that has that, to the factor into seriously, Sinead. I know. So, yeah, like, it's not even hard. Like, literally, just, I just live my life and stupid things happen to me. And, but they say, like, you attract what you put out into the world. Oh, you do, yeah, yeah. I'm just an absolute weirdo, and I yeah. just attract them. So that's just life, yeah. But that's, you, that's what it is. It's, yeah, you, but you've, you've kind of wrangled it into the perfect way. You're actually able to make TV shows now as a result of it. So in all fairness, like, 
you do kind of make yourself out to era like I was just rolling up along a wall there and his uh, next thing somebody just offered me a show like I you know Dave Moore from Today FM kind of said a similar thing just life just seemed to roll into the next you go yeah but you'll work your whole off when you get your when you get offered those moments too like you oh, know oh yeah well, I would I suppose we're all kind of like that like anything you do you want to do to the best of your ability do you know what I mean so I mean I'm doing the best I can with the little experience I have do you know just giving it a go that's it that's class. That's class. And is Series Each Need One still available on the RT player? Can that be watched? Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, it is. Yep. Yeah. And when can we expect uh, Series Each Need Two? Is it going to be called Series Each Need Two? Uh, I actually don't know. I can't you should do it this time with an ex- You should do it this time with an exclamation mark instead of a question mark. It'd be Series Each Need. <laughs> yeah, things are getting serious. <laughs> so I don't know. It'll be before the end of the year anyway, but I'm not sure when it's actually going to be out. Perfect. I'll put the link to the RT player anyway in the in the show notes. Sinead, yep. you're absolute legend. I mean, you did steamroll all your competition, and I like that. I like that. You know, I mean, you felt no pity nor care for any of them. Yeah, you done no work. You yeah. didn't research a single thing. I know. I have a list of them here in front of me. I know every one of them that were in those competitions. But look, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. They mean nothing to you now because you you're after getting. It was my fourth gig. Like you're after getting two TV my shows. Own name. <laughs> here we are mad things mad things happen Sinead with a father over a re Quinlan thanks a million for that that was brilliant thanks so much for having me cheers, cheers.